welcome to Two Jeffs One. Today I'd like to show you how to take a normal wood stove and convert it into a waste oil burner. I've made this one fully automatic. Other than lighting it, it does work off a thermostat. Uh, there's not a real lot to it. It's pretty simple and it's extremely efficient. I was going to post on eBay the plans to build this, but I decided to share it with everyone. Uh, what would really be nice is at the end of the video, if you like what I produced, Click the like button, I really appreciate that. And maybe even contribute to one of the sponsors from YouTube. Thank you, let's get to work. Well, I bet you'd like to see this run, so uh, I'll come, we'll come right over here and I'll walk you through the startup procedure for this, quite simple. Right here I have a 12 volt power supply, and we turn that on, and what that does is that runs the wiring for the electrical lights and the cycling solenoid. And then we go down here and we turn the switch on. That turns the smog pump on. And smog pump's running, so we come over here and we turn the main valve on for the oil and open up the other one here, oh, about four rounds. And wait about two minutes here. Okay, what I have here is a 50-50 mix of diesel fuel and mineral spirits. What I'm going to do is I'll just squirt a little bit of that into the burner here. And light it. And there you go, you're rocking for the day. Right now we've been running for five minutes. This is an upside down sediment bulb that I have a little piece of eighth inch copper tubing on that I bent in a U and then it shows you how much oil is going into the stove right now. And here's your eighth inch bit in case you kind of want to compare. And this is ten minutes into the running. What I'll do here, I'll give you a run through of the basics of the whole system here. And I've taken the wire ties off that held this onto the copper tube, so it's simpler to understand here. And the oil just comes down into here. That's the main shutoff valve right here. This would be a clean out if you'd ever need it. And then all I got is two lines that come off of that. Now this valve here is for idle, and you never bother to touch that. And the other line is your high speed circuit. And that goes through the solenoid here and then into it. So when it switches from the drip, drip, drip on this to go to the high speed, that's the one it's using here. Now, if one don't like the electrics and all that stuff, you can just put that right onto here. You wouldn't even need any of this if you want to make it a manual control, but just make darn sure you keep an eye on it. And this is 15 minutes after it's been started. So in regards to getting oil into the unit, I got a double wall pipe right here. And that keeps the heat off the little center quarter inch pipe so it don't carbon up that. And the pipe just comes into the stove and terminates straight. It's just a washer welded on the end to go from the big pipe to the small pipe. And that elbow you see on there. That does nothing other than it's just a heat shield to keep that cooler yet. And then the oil just drips off the end of that straight pipe actually into the burner right there for it to spin the burn. You'll also notice that I got the majority of the flame licking on the sidewall over there. Uh, to, you can move the burner left to right the way I got that pipe in there uh, if you want to play with the timing of it. But uh, once you get it figured out, you never touch any of that stuff. That half inch pipe going out of the burner in the bottom, what that's for is if it would ever get any more than an inch worth of oil in the burner, instead of running all over inside the stove here, it should run out and into this tray here is what I had in mind for that. Also, I believe it aids a little bit in vortexing for a little better burn too, so it kind of serves a double purpose because of the angle on it there. 20 minutes into the run, now that's a nice fire. See how clean it's running too. Don't even gotta go look at the chimney. 
Yeah, you, the only thing you ever got to mess with on this is your high speed flow valve. And after the room warms up and the unit warms up a little bit, you got to turn that down, oh, maybe three times in a half hour. And then that's it for the day. It seems to run real well all by itself. This line here is the one that comes from upstairs from the smog pump in and around behind the heat shields. And right here is where it goes into the stove to feed that quarter inch copper line for the burner. And the other part of it comes up here and goes into the double wall tube here to help cool that. That just sets in there. Not a big thing. This piece here don't really do anything other than it's a muffler. If you don't have that in line, you can really hear the noise from the air from that vein pump pulsing uh, coming out of there. And if the power ever goes off, I bet you know what this is for. This is the heart of my oil stove here, the smog pump. And anyway, I keep it in this garbage can here in case something would ever fail so it wouldn't start the building on fire. But I got a quarter horse motor on there, small pulley, 1725, uh, onto the smog pump. Now, one thing you got to do on these is there's two holes in the back, and all you got to do is put a couple Allen screws in them, tap them out, 3 8 I believe it was, and a couple Allen screws. These things work great. This pump here, uh, I used it for 10 years. It was used even when I put it on this assembly and it failed in 05 and then I had to put some fresh bearings in it, it's still the same pump because I'm turning it so slow. And then there's a rebuilt one that I got but I never even had it on here. Oh and by the way, why I didn't have this on when I was filming it, this thing is kind of loud, that's why it's upstairs. And also, if you don't have rubber holes in line, if you use copper, the noise even transmits more so downstairs. I don't know if that's something you want to know or not. but. Now, other than lighting it, this unit is automatic. Uh, here's the thermostat for it on the wall. I had to show you that, and I'll show you what it does. Okay, and right now the oil stove's on the idle mode. And if you come back a little bit, you see we got just the green light only on. And if you look in, and that's what we got for heat going on with that little bit of oil going in it. Thermostat just called for heat in the room again, so you see the yellow lights on. And you can see the oil flow increased. And if you come down here, you can see the burner starting to take off again. So that's how it looks when it's cycling and working. There's two high limit sensors on this. And one of course is right on the pot itself, back here. And if we go up the chimney, I got a high limit right up here. Now if the chimney gets any more than 250, right here, then that sensor kicks out and I'll show you what happens. We're going to pop the wire off. And we go down here, now we got a red light. And if you look in the sediment bulb, we're down to a drip. Now I have two fans that come on automatically with a temperature sensor. And of course I got the one in the rear here too, and it does have a speed control. The sensor for this is down under the unit here. Of course we can't really see it from here, but as soon as the stove warms up a little bit, it turns on the fans automatically. And this is how I get rid of the waste oil. I just dump it in here after you do an oil change. And you come up here, and you turn on the switch here, and that pumps it upstairs into the tank. Now what I have for that is this pump down here is a front loader pump off a case C tractor or front loader. Also I have a filter in line here and down in there I have a window screen on that line. So you really don't get anything getting pumped upstairs. Normally the oil that I get here is pretty clean. Now as far as cleaning, all you gotta do is reach in, you pull out the airline, lift the burner out. This is the residue after a day's worth of running. You wouldn't really have to clean it every day if you didn't want, but I always do it's a little more efficient. That's it. We'll dump it out in the garbage can. You're ready for another day. And that's what it looks like after you get it all chopped out. And after you got the burner all cleaned, 
Tip it. Set it back in there. Put your copper line in the side. And you drop that other little pipe in the hole there for the drain if it ever needed. Set the clocking. And you're rocking. Now for cleaning the window off, this is the amount of uh, residue just from one day's use. Usually if you clean it every day, it pretty much so wipes right off. Now if you run it a week and you got a little more residue, this works real good for cleaning the window off. This is my oil storage upstairs and I got some neat little line gauges on there so I know how much waste oil is in there. Really I only need one tank for the season. But uh, yeah, if you get a little extra oil, I guess it don't hurt either. You leave the windows open or something then. Uh, got a little moat around them uh, in case something ever would go kittywampus. And I got a uh, solid beam underneath that's integrated right into the building when I put that together. Then for shutdown at night, all you got to do is shut the main oil off. And I always turn the high speed valve shut. You shut the power supply off. Set the timer on five minutes and the switch off. And then it'll all shut down by itself. Here's what you need to know to build this for yourself. Get that pause button ready. This is the oil control valve, in case you're interested. And if you wish to make yours thermoset controlled, here's what you're going to need. And this is the adjustable high limit on the chimney from Granger. This 12 volt solenoid, I don't have a part number for, don't even know what it's off of, but it had to be modified when I used it for this application. It's one I had upstairs. I got a gasket and an O-ring and stuff. So. Granger probably has just what you need. You'll just have to look for a 12 volt normally closed solenoid. And of course, this is the wiring diagram. The best part about this stove here is how it's so efficient, where you got the 250 degree high limit right here. You know all the heat's staying down in the pot. There's no need for a magic heat or any of this other trick stuff that can cost you a bunch of money. It's just so efficient the way it is. It's been a wonderful stove. I've had this in use, this one here, for over 10 years. I have been heating with waste oil for over 30 now. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. And stop back from time to time. I got some other projects too I'd like to produce a video on homemade stuff of course and if you liked the video and it helped you out can you please click the like button anyway thank you for watching have a nice day bye bye